Hey guys this is Sabir. This time I will try my best to make a tutorial for the beginner of Blender. We will create this glass candle. In Blender we use many shortcuts to perform tasks faster with a clean interface. At first, this might seem hard but over time you will also fall in love with the Blender shortcuts and workflow. You can select everything by box select, but let's press A to select everything in the scene, and then remove it by pressing X and from the pop-up menu press delete. Press Shift plus A to open the ADD pop-up menu. Go to Mesh greater than Cube. While the box is selected press S to scale and drag the mouse. You can orbit the scene by holding and dragging the middle mouse button. In Scale mode, you can press any number to scale any object in a specific number. Here I am pressing number 1 on the keypad to activate the front orthographic mode, press G to grab the object and dragging the mouse to reposition the cube. While dragging the mouse you can hold the control key on the keyboard so that the object will snap to the grid, also while grabbing the object you can press X, Y, or Z to move the object in a specific direction. Here I am pressing Z to move the cube up on the Z axis only. Press the tab key to go to edit mode, in edit mode, we can press 1 for vertex, 2 for an edge, and 3 for phase selection. Select a top face and move on the Z axis by pressing G and Z, you can always see which shortcut I am pressing at the bottom left corner of the screen. Select the bottom face, press I, and drag the mouse to inset face. Inset couple of times to have something like this. While inset face and dragging the mouse you can press and hold shift key to slow down inset rate. Now select the bottom face of the cube and press and hold the control key and plus key at the same time to increase face selection. Press G then Z to move the selection on the Z axis. Select the bottom face again and move the face to the negative Z axis using the same method. If you face any problems make sure to check at the bottom left corner of the screen for appropriate shortcuts. Select the top face and press E to extrude the top face, then press Z to lock the movement on the Z axis. Press S to scale the top face. While the top face is selected press the X key from the keyboard, then from the pop-up menu select face to delete the top face. Now go to the modifier tab on the right side of the interface. From the modifier drop-down list choose subdivision surface modifier. This will smooth the surface area. Here we have two input fields. Increase the levels viewport to 2. You can see our cube now almost looks like a cylinder. The transparent box around the solid object is our main cube and the cylindrical object is the result of a subdivision surface modifier. Also, you can notice that the surface of the solid object is not smooth. Press the tab key to change edit mode to object mode. Now press F3 to open Blender's search operation. Type shade smooth and select it. You can see our object is now smoothened. Press the tab key again to activate edit mode. Press the Ctrl plus R key to add an edge loop. Scroll up the mouse to increase the edge loop. You can now drag the mouse anywhere to see the result. Whenever you are happy press left click to add an edge loop. If you drag your mouse now you can see that edge cuts are following your mouse movement. This is helpful if you want to change your edge loop's position. Here I right clicked so that the edge loop would stay at its initial position. We need to drag both of the edge loops to the corner. Press the S key from the keyboard and drag the mouse. This will scale edge loops from the center. Press the X key so that the edge loops will slide side to side only. Once you are happy with the new position of the edges press the left mouse key. There is another way you can reposition edge loops. Press the S key then the X key and then look at this number. You can notice the number is changing based on your mouse movement. Undo and press the S key then the X key and this time type a specific number. In my case, I'm typing 2.2, yours will be different. So experiment with the number. Once you are happy let's complete another side with the same method. Press Ctrl plus R to add an edge loop, scroll up the mouse key to increase the edge loops cut, and press the left mouse click to activate edge loops. 
Press the S key then this time press the Y key and type the specific number. Once done press the Enter key. Now you can see our solid shape is box looking again. And have smooth round corners. Let's add a loop cut horizontally too. Here, I am using the same method. Since we are in edge selection mode, if you click an edge it will be selected, if you press and hold the alt key and click an edge, it will select the edge loop. Let's reposition this edge. Press the G key to grab the edge, then press the Z key to move the edge vertically. Using the same method here I am creating a couple of edge loops. Now select the top edge loop by holding the ALT key and clicking on the edge. Press the F3 button and search for, to sphere. You can see this option is also available under mesh, transform. Also, you can see there is a hotkey already assigned by default which is the, shift plus ALT plus S, key combination. Let's press the, shift plus ALT plus S, hotkey to activate this option. You can see your mouse icon is changed. Move the mouse and you can notice the selected edge loop is turning into a circle. Also check the top value for better understanding of maximum value too. This is how you can select any number of edges and turn those into a circle. Let's scale a bit. With the edge selected press the E key to extrude. To limit the extrude direction press the Z key. Once happy press the left mouse click to complete the extrude operation. You can press the G and the Z key to move the edges on the Z axis. Here I am adding another loop cut by pressing the CTRL plus R key. You can press this button or press the ALT plus Z key to see the model in X-ray vision. Let's add another loop cut. In the modifier tab, you can deselect this button to hide the transparent box around our 3D model. Here I am noticing that the top portion of our model is not fully circled. It has some hard and round corners. We will fix this issue in the next part of this tutorial.